Hi everyone, it's Miss Torres here. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, today I'm here to do a little science lesson with you, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's begin by thinking about what happens to a raindrop that falls into a mountain stream. You could say that the drop of water will flow downhill with the stream. But that being said, let's take a look at our focus question today. Our focus question today is, how does water move on a slope? The materials needed for our investigation today are waxed paper, a dropper, tape, water, a flat surface like a tray, you could also use a baking tray as well, and two books. I'm going to first start by laying my book down on a flat surface, then I'm going to take my tray and some wax paper and set it down onto the book. I'm going to use two pieces of tape to secure down the sides of the wax paper so that it doesn't move. Now that we're set up, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to take my dropper, my cup of water, and suction up some water here. And I'm just going to drop individual droplets onto my wax paper to observe what happens. Take a look and compare the different sizes of the domes on the slope. Which ones tend to move faster and which ones move slower? By taking a look at my droplets here, we can agree that the water moves downhill when placed on a slope. It was pretty interesting to see how the droplets reacted. I put drops on top of each other, I released the drops from different heights, and I definitely noticed that one dome can chase and catch another dome as it falls. Let's try something else here. I'm going to do a water dome race. So here I am placing different sized droplets onto the top of my tray here. After I placed the different sized droplets, I went ahead and moved the tray so it's angled at a slope. I noticed that the bigger the droplet, the faster it moved down the slope. Not all of the domes moved. I noticed that the smaller ones stayed at the top, the largest dome moved the fastest, and the water dome moves faster as the size decreased. Notice how the largest droplet moved first. The largest droplet also moved the quickest. I gave the tray a little shake just to see what would happen. The two other largest drops moved, but it was way slower than the larger one. And the two little droplets did not move at all. Let's go ahead and see what would happen when we increase the slope. So I'm going to add another book on top. I'm going to place my tray on top of my two books.
and I'm going to start placing some droplets just randomly at the top of the slope. Do you know what force caused the water drops to move down the slope? If you said gravity, you're right. Gravity is the pulling force that caused the domes to move down. The steeper the slope, the faster a water dome moves. So how does water move on a slope? Through observation, I noticed that as the angle of slope increases, bigger water domes begin to move before smaller water domes, and that larger water domes move faster than smaller domes on any type of slope. All right, friends, that's it for now. So until next time, please be safe, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.